Good evening and welcome to our third session of our parent seminars here at Center Grove School Corporation. Um, my name is Nora Hoover and I'm the Assistant uh, Superintendent of Teaching and Learning. I'm new to this position. I'm really excited to join this awesome team of educators um, and proud tonight to share with you um, some of the work that we're doing in the department. Um, with me tonight are, are several people. Um, Jenna Cooper is our coordinator of Connected Learning. Um, Matt Ayersman is our STEM instructional coach. Melissa Bardak is our STEM instructional coach and also our media specialist. Kara Heichelbeck is our e-learning coach and global campus teacher. Allie Chance is our director of special education. And Kaylee Brown is our coordinator of special education. In addition, some more people in our department are also here tonight in support, and that is our two directors of teaching and learning for elementary, Marcy Shostak, and for secondary, Shannon Carol Fry, and also, um, oh, Ali Chance already, and then um, Amanda Trimble, who is our special programs coordinator. <clears throat> uh, on the agenda tonight, we want to talk about two different topics, um, 21st century learning opportunities and that's gonna focus on the skills, technology, and STEM resources that we are equipping students with um, throughout the district. Um, we'll also talk about what is e-learning and when will it become part of Center Grove's calendar. And then the second item is on trust-based relational interventions. Um, this is something our elementary schools have been working on and we wanna talk about the progress we've made in our elementary schools and what are those plans in supporting our social emotional needs of our secondary students. Um, I'm now going to turn it over to Jenna Cooper, our coordinator of Connected Learning. Um, I have a really great team and we're all going to share um, some things that we do for 21st century learning in Center Grove. Um, so some of the big topics that we'll talk about are just general technology resources, STEM and project-based learning, media services, blended and online learning, as well as e-learning days. And so I just wanted to start off by sharing, um, we have a lot of really great technology resources in Center Grove. Um, you may be aware that we are one-to-one, -one, so every student has access to an iPad and a Chromebook while they're at school. Um, we have really great technology in our classrooms, um, so projectors, document cameras, interactive TVs, um, and just sharing kind of the, the high-level resources that we use from kindergarten through 12th grade. Um, we use Google Apps for education. Um, we use Canvas for a lot of our online learning, um, and we also use Skyward, as you are aware. And so I'd just like to start with, um, when we talk about technology, it's, it's a lot more than just the devices that we have. Uh, we focus on learning first. Um, technology comes second. Technology is really just a tool to help um, teachers get better at their teaching and help students um, connect with resources um, that they have access to at their fingertips. Um, so there are a couple graphics on this slide here. Um, one of those is the SAMR model. Um, and this is something that we use in, in our instructional technology team to help. SAMR is substitution. So instead of writing a, a paper by hand, students can use their iPad or Chromebook to maybe type a paper. Um, that's just that entry-level entry technology integration. And you can see in the, the ocean metaphor that it goes all the way to redefinition. And that's really when we start um, to allow students to create things that they would not be able to create if they didn't have the technology. And that is our ultimate goal for using technology in the classroom is to give students new opportunities that they didn't have before. And the other graphic, the, the circle, um, the three Venn diagram there is called TPAC. And really that's just a, a, um, a tool that we share with teachers to say, um, you not only um, need to know about your, your content, um, your pedagogy, how you teach, um, but also how you can use technology to help support all of those things. 
Um, so the kind of sweet spot is where we encourage teachers to, um, to use technology. I'm going to pass it off to Matt Ayersman. He's one of our STEM instructional coaches. When uh, the community began calling for additional STEM instruction, uh, the district responded by putting together a task force of community members, uh, people in industry, uh, staff members, parents, to try and guide where that was going to go and what that was going to look like over the course of the next few years. Um, after that, those decisions were made, then uh, we had a group of teachers that came together and kind of defined what STEM was going to be in our district. Uh, STEM is always kind of seen as an acronym of science, technology, engineering, and math, and we felt like that it had an opportunity for students to be thinking at a much higher level than just to combine, you know, those four um, four subject areas in, into an acronym, but to really pull together an interdisciplinary approach. Um, we wanted STEM to be guided by inquiry, um, and we wanted kids to be working together to come up with new ideas and uh, to provide them some context to real world problems. And so um, that's really been a, a, our guide over the last few years to determine where we were going to go and, and all of our decisions that we make with STEM programming. Uh, we refer back to that definition that was created by our teachers um, to, to make sure that we are staying true to, to our um, initial goals. One of the results of that was the opening of this facility, the Innovation Center. And uh, this was opened in the fall of 2016 for student use. Um, all of our students have the opportunity to come. We have all a, all students K through eight will have at least one visit per year. And we spend usually two and a half to three hours doing some sort of very directed STEM instruction that falls under the uh, definition that we talked about before. It's all inquiry based, driven by questions, solving real world problems, open ended problem solving, um, and allowing the students to kind of get their hands on things, build things, and, and know that it's okay to fail as long as they keep improving their design and trying to find something that, um, that will uh, allow them to, to feel successful with their. Um, I'm going to pass this off briefly to Melissa Bardak. So in each of our buildings, in our media centers, um, we do have STEM kits that allow teachers to bring these STEM opportunities into their classroom. It's a great opportunity for students to connect their content with what they're learning in class to um, exploring and being innovative in the classroom on a regular basis. We also have several kits that we house here at the Innovation Center that Mr. Ayersman and myself bring into the classroom to help develop these skills of 21st century learning with teachers. So we try to focus on collaboration, critical thinking, communi communication, and creativity while using these tools in the classroom. It does really help provide a level playing field for students as some of them may not have ever played with connects or a makey makey before, whereas Legos are also available to have something common that students may be using at home. One uh, way that we have, I guess, introduced STEM to a lot of people is through the idea of project-based learning. And project-based learning is, again, we pose a question to the students, an open-ended question that allows them to learn through the inquiry process. So through the process of trying to find an answer to that question, the students will you know, be guided towards the content that's needed in the courses in which they're working. And um, we've had the opportunity um, to you know, help teachers put together project-based learning units in you know, most subject areas. And one of the things that we try to do with those project-based learning units, with our, especially with our elementary teachers, is to make sure that it's a cross-curricular learning experience for the kids, that they're learning more than one subject area throughout the course of that project. Um, we want them to solve real-world problems, to see you know, not only what problems are in the real world, but to provide context for their understanding of the world around them. Um, and we want to be able to have them share that with an authentic audience. And sometimes that authentic audience is an expert in that field. Sometimes that authentic audience is parents, teachers, um, anyone that uh, may be interested or, or willing to listen to the ideas that they've come up with, which are often really, really impressive. Um, we've had the opportunity to train 120 teachers over the last three summers in project-based learning through what we call the Center Grove Innovation Academy. And it's uh, usually a two to three day 
summer training for our teachers that we model the process of project-based learning and allow them to create a unit that is ready for them to use in their classrooms the following year. Some of the really great projects that have come from that, um, we've had kindergartners that have been doing weather observations throughout the course of the year and use that information to make predictions and recommendations about uh, you know, not only the weather, but about what to wear the next day, what time recess, recess should be. Uh, we had a second grade teacher that um, through the course of the year uh, taught about the monarch butterfly and the preservation of the monarch butterfly and it resulted in the kids building a, building a butterfly garden at Sugar Grove that they use today to collect monarch uh, caterpillars for uh, get to continue that project uh, um, over the course of the last three years. We've got you know food trucks being designed in fourth grade, a travel podcast done in fifth grade, uh, predictions on the future of transportation in our middle school classes. We had a seventh grade social studies teacher that taught geography and culture by having the kids planning for the zombie apocalypse. Um, and we've had high school computer science teachers using robots to emulate human activity by programming them to compete in winter Olympic events. Um, we even had calculus teachers helping the kids design a better snow ski using uh, principles in calculus. So we've had a huge variety of projects that teachers have put together and uh, all of them address different areas, different real world problems, and a lot of them are, are personal passions of the teachers. And so it makes it only that much more engaging for our students and, and the teachers alike. So throughout the district, um, in each of our media centers, again, we house some of those STEM kits, but our media paras have worked really closely with classroom teachers to help align the literacy connection and really make the media centers a connection, um, an extension of the classroom when those students go to specials in the elementary school or if they are visiting in the middle school with their classrooms or in the high school just to make an innovative and collaborative space for students. So here at Center Grove, we have spent the last few years redefining and reevaluating our spaces, K through 12. Our high school library got a full overhaul with uh, new collaborative spaces and areas where students can work independently in small groups or in large groups. They've recently opened their maker space this year that was funded by Anderson Hauser and Forum Credit Union where teachers can bring in their classrooms and tie in that STEM content as well and just have kids making in their classroom or where students can come on their spare time during STAR to just make and tinker. Everything from a Cricut to a 3D printer to sand is available in that space and our art club has done an amazing job painting um, a mural on that wall as well. In the elementary and middle school, we are still Reevaluating and redesigning that space as we are looking at new furniture. Um, we have currently gone through our selection and reevaluated what's in our collection and where do we want to be with literature across the district. So we're looking at things that are potentially outdated and updating into more current student relevant topics and titles. And also some of those award winners that we may not have on our shelves right now. We've also recently partnered with the Johnson County Public Library to provide smart accounts to all of our students. So using their student ID number, students have access to all digital content and databases through the Johnson County Public Library. That's also tailored to their level. So based on where they are in school, K through five or 612, that content is limited for certain ratings and availability. I'm going to turn it back over now to Mrs. Heichelbeck, our um, global campus teacher and e-learning coach. Thanks. All right, so one of the things that we're really hoping to help our students, sorry, something back, um, do, our teachers do is help to do more of this blended and online learning. And so we really want the students to feel like it's personalized, that they have choice, that they have voice. Um, and that when they are getting online, they're not isolated and that they're interacting with one another. So these are some of the things that we are working with our teachers to help our students um, or bring to our students. One of the areas I oversee is global campus. Um, and our teachers do a really great job of doing student choice and voice and those interactions in our global campus program. Um, so global campus is our online platform. It's at the high school. Um, we really are wanting to get kids exposed to true online learning, um, especially career and college ready 
most careers, you're having to do some type of online training, or when you go to college, you might take an online course. So we're really wanting to introduce that facet to our students um, in high school. We have two different types of courses that we offer. One is Revive, and so that's for credit recovery. Most of our Revive courses are throughout the summer. And then we also offer Ignite, and so that's for that initial credit. Um, and those are summer and then also through the school year. So our summer school program will run June 3rd through July 19th. We're gonna have signups for it um, right after spring break where kids can apply um, in order to take summer school. And again, they can take Revive or Ignite classes. Um, and then during the school year, we offer year-long, and we also offer um, first semester, second semester courses. We currently have enough courses um, to offer a Core 40 diploma. Um, we don't offer that as an avenue right now, but we have, enough, we have the courses available so that we can really meet every student's needs. Um, pretty exciting program. Couple of testimonials, we have kids that will love to do it. Um, we have a couple athletes that this affords them to be able to train um, and still also participate at school and get a Center Grove High School Diploma. So we're really proud of the fact that um, our programming is at the Center Grove rigor and level um, that what students would get in, in the traditional classroom. So. Now Ms. Jenna is gonna talk about e-learning days. Thank you. So just a couple more slides from our Connected Learners team. Um, one of those that we wanted to share with you is our plan for e-learning days uh, moving forward. And so on the screen, you have um, some information about um, different options or scenarios that schools around the state are using for e-learning days. Um, so about four years ago, the state offered this e-learning virtual program um, either for a snow makeup day option or a scheduled um, e-learning day for professional development for teachers. Um, our plan is for next school year to um, use e-learning days for that snow makeup day option. So um, right now we, we still have Martin Luther King Jr. Day and um, President's Day built in as snow makeup days. Um, so what will likely happen is if we close school um, we will use those two built-in snow makeup days um, as our e-learning days. So students can still complete their work on that day from home, um, and, and teachers will be available to help answer questions um, if, they have, if they have any. Um, and then if we have more than two snow days, that might look like um, just instead of adding days on to the end of the school year, um, students should be able to complete that work um, from home without having to extend the calendar. Um, so we've been spending this school year pre preparing. Um, we've been training every teacher on e-learning days and really giving them time as a, a team to develop some high quality um, online lessons for students to, to complete from home for e-learning days. Um, so we just wanted to share our plan um, for, for next year. If we have enough snow days, we will use those um, makeups as e-learning days. And then just to kind of wrap up everything that my team has talked about, um, really everything that we do um, is all about 21st century skills. Um, Melissa Bardak mentioned the, the four C's, the critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. Those are kind of the, the 21st century skills that we know we want to prepare students with so when they go to college or career after Center Grove, um, we want them to be prepared to be successful. Um, we also talk a lot about the problem solving piece as well. Um, and we are working really hard to equip our teachers with lessons to um, address the digital citizenship as well. So again, I started out by saying that our students have a lot of really great resources, um, a, really, a lot of technology but we wanna teach them how to use that appropriately while they're here. Um, so this is just kind of a, a summary of all of those skills that we want students to prepare, be prepared with when they leave Center Grove. And at this time, I'm going to pass it off to Allie Chance for um, trust-based relational intervention. All right, good evening. Well, I'm happy to be back today. Um, we started this conversation about trust-based relational intervention in the fall during our first parent 
um, series. So I wanted to provide an update kind of on how things are going in our elementary schools, um, what we've seen from that, and then our plan moving forward to support the needs of our secondary kiddos in the future. So I want to do a little bit of recap in case you weren't either tuning in on Facebook or here present with us. Um, just kind of an overview of what TBRI is and kind of how we started on this journey as a school district. Um, we've worked as a, as a school district, we have worked to provide a safe learning environment for all of our students to help them learn and grow. Um, so with that, um, as, as a group of administrators, um, we recognized a need to expand on the tools that we were providing to our teachers. Um, to be able to make learning environments that were conducive to all learners. So um, that's kind of how we started down the path of investigating um, different programs and frameworks that we could incorporate into our school district. Um, and after a lot of research, ended up with um, trust-based relational intervention. So what is that? Um, it's an attachment-based trauma-informed approach designed to meet the complex needs of vulnerable children. And as I say that, and it gives kind of a list there of um, different examples of trauma that students might have been through. Um, you know, we try to let teachers know that trauma doesn't mean that they've been through a huge traumatic event or several traumatic events in their life. Um, it could have been one moment in time. It could have been um, even, you know, before birth that they experienced some, some stress that caused trauma in their life. It could have been um, even a divorce from a parent or something like that later in life that has also caused that emotional stress. So um, we try to have that lens as we go through this and understand that while that was the focus of this framework that was designed, TBRI is truly beneficial for every single child. And I think you'll see some of that in the next couple slides. And we will watch this video that does a really good job of just kind of wrapping it all up um, and introducing what TBRI is again. TBRI, Trust-Based Relational Intervention, has at its core building a trusting relationship. It has three sets of principles, and they look at the child as a whole. When you think about development, the baby cries, and I say, yes, I will comfort you. And so this child learns that they have a voice. They learn trust, which is the lesson of the first year of life. I can trust. There are so many children from hard places, and for those children, their capacity to trust has been fiercely damaged. The brain chemistry of a child who cries and no one comes is dramatically altered. The child with a history of trauma or loss or abuse has no hope of healing without a nurturing relationship. In every way that I make time and space, that I give touch, eye contact, and I give words, I am going to empower this child to go back to the beginning of what he or she should have experienced in the arms of a loving parent that said, when you cry, I will come. The phenomenal thing about a trust-based intervention is, as we connect to this child, as we build safety, we actually change the brain chemistry. We change the wiring of the brain. This is really the heart and soul of all that we are and all that we do. Do I look into the child's eyes? Do I touch their arm when I talk to them? When they talk to me, do I stop what I'm doing and talk to them? This is the essence of mindfulness. The excitatory chemicals about, I'm afraid, I'm hungry, I'm cold, those are balanced when the caregiver comes and gives warmth. All regulation occurs first with an external regulator. So in the beginning, I regulate all. They're cold, I bring warmth. They're crying, I bring myself. And out of my regulation, their brain develops capacity for self-regulation. If this child didn't have this experience, that child doesn't feel safe. This chemistry can be altered, first, by knowing they're safe. Second, by nutrient-rich foods. Third, by my environmental regulation of that child's emotion. And fourth, by appropriate exercise. So we can balance brain chemistry by creating a holistic environment. We clearly have to deal with behavior, correcting, means showing a child the right behavior, praising him when he gets it, and showing it to him until he can get it right, and showing him with no fear and no shame, so that he builds success, not a greater sense of failure. So the message of hope for our families is that we can help our children to dramatic levels of healing. We simply have to be devoted to it. 
and be willing to invest what it's going to take. Some of these strategies that brain chemistry can still be altered. So no matter what experiences a child has had um, at any point in their life, um, that we can provide the support to them that they need. So th that's what's coming from TBRI, and those are the tools um, that we are equipping our teachers with. There we go. Oops. Okay. Um, Mrs. Jesse Hyde was here our first session and presented on a lot of this, but I think it's really important to go back some of these key components of TBRI um, and what you'll see more from our teachers and what your, your children will actually be um, experiencing. And the first one, and to me the absolute most important piece of TBRI, is the connection and relationship. Um, and that's where I go back to there isn't a child out there or a human out there that won't benefit from these practices because everybody can benefit from connection and relationship building. Um, so I love that that is the foundation of what we are um, empowering our teachers to be able to do in their classrooms. So having those trusted adults in the school, throughout the school, multiple trusted adults is going to be very beneficial for our students. Um, you know, knowing that not all students come into school feeling safe, and that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, they might know that the doors can lock as soon as they come in and, they, and we have those safety features, but knowing that they are truly safe and cared for at school um, is really important for them to actually be able to engage in the learning that we're wanting them to do. So first we need to make sure that that felt safety is there um, in creating that safe environment. Um, another really important piece of this that they talked about in that video is teaching our students how to self-regulate their behavior. Um, they won't always have an adult right next to them to do that co-regulating that they talked about. And although that's a starting point for us to be able to teach that, um, our ultimate goal with students is that they can learn those strategies on their own to be able to self-regulate, um, whether it be in the classroom, at home, or later on in life. That's very important. Um, and then we also work a lot with our teachers on just addressing some of the basic needs of students. So having water available in their classrooms, having healthy snacks, getting physical activity, um, all things that even as adults, um, you know, when we're hungry at work or at home, we get a snack and we meet that need or we grab a drink when we need it. Um, you know, getting up and moving around if you've been sitting a lot. So um, having our teachers be able to provide that in the classroom is also very important to help um, maintain that regulation for everyone. So that's a lot of what TBRI is, um, some of my personal thoughts on how important it is. But here are five different quotes from teachers around our district. Um, and these were five of dozens that I could have picked from. But I think it goes a, lot, a long way to show um, how impactful even just the first year of TBRI implementation has been in our elementary schools. Um, we have a teacher from Bridges Academy, our alternative academy, at the elementary level that says, TBRI has provided me with strategies and tools that can be implemented in daily routines and everyday interactions that have allowed me to build trust and relationships with students. It has allowed me to build a solid foundation that helps to shape behaviors, social skills, and motivate learning, um, ultimately, which is great. Um, a Pleasant Grove Elementary teacher shared that students are becoming more mindful of others as well as developing personal awareness of their own emotions and responses. So getting some of that empathy in there too and, and learning how to be aware of others' feelings. Um, another Pleasant Grove Elementary teacher shared that TBRI has been very impactful in my classroom because it has allowed all of my students to really take a step back and think of others before their own interests. Um, I love this one, a teacher at Sugar Grove Elementary um, shared that they do nurture group every Wednesday, and if they don't, her, or her students remind her that she's missed it. Um, I've been in her classroom, and they have a chart where, uh, as a class, they can earn different rewards, and one of them that they frequently choose is to get an extra nurture group, um, which is their class getting together and kind of having that community building, relationship building amongst each other in the classroom. So that's really neat that they are choosing to do that. Um, and then finally, a fifth grade teacher from Center Grove Elementary shared that using TBRI this year has given me consistent vocabulary to apply to procedures I was already using. I've witnessed students helping other students get regulated using the same vocabulary I use because of TBRI. I've also seen a large improvement in the amount of time it takes some students to get regulated now compared to even just at the beginning of the year. So really impactful um, quotes. We're doing a lot of data collection on the impact as well, and we'll be excited to share that out in the future. So that's what things are looking like 
um, in our elementary. I also have this example with a couple pictures um, that Mrs. Brown shared with us. This is her second grade class, um, and they are doing what they call a complement circle. So just a very simple activity of passing the ball back and forth and giving each other true compliments. Um, she said that it was evident they've developed personal relationships with, with each other and truly care for one another. Um, so I know as we envision all of our children sitting in those classrooms, that's exactly what I think we would all want to see from our kids. So that's really neat. So as far as our training plan, um, our elementary is what we called kind of phase one. So from May to September of 2018, um, we were fortunate enough to be able to train 415 staff members on the framework. Again, this is not a, a boxed curriculum, a canned program. Um, it's truly a framework and a mindset. Um, so 415 staff members we trained there. Our primary focus was elementary. Um, we also trained administrators, counselors, um, some special education teachers, and then our school-based adult and child therapists. And now we are moving into and preparing for phase two, which will begin in June. Um, again, our middle school teachers is where we will move here. And this will be the same training, um, a two-day training for all of our middle school staff. Um, we have been able to work with Amy Abel, who's um, the TBRI practitioner that we have partnered with. And she has been able to implement a lot of um, new information around neuroscience, um, neuroplasticity that she has embedded within her presentation to gear it more toward um, a secondary focus teacher than elementary. So we're really excited to launch that to our teachers. Um, this will also include consultation for our middle school teachers throughout the school year. Um, and then as I mentioned, we've um, created that enhanced um, training um, to, just to meet the needs of our secondary teachers. We also want to share tonight um, in the fall, we launched a parent training opportunity and got fantastic response. Um, unfortunately, we were, because of the type of training, we were only able to have 50 parents attend that. Um, I had another 100 on the list, on the wait list. Um, it was very well received. We got great feedback um, from parents that attended. So we are very, very happy to be able to share that we're going to offer that again. Um, it is a two-part training. So if you are able to attend, we do ask that you attend both evenings because it just builds upon itself. But that will be April 25th and May 2nd. Um, still working out the location, but it will be in one of our Center Grove buildings, so we will share that out. Um, but a little bit of information, the training will look at an in-depth, take an in-depth look into TBRI. Um, the goal there is for parents to gain a better understanding of TBRI and how you can implement those strategies into your home. Um, since the first day, personally, that I went through training a couple years ago, I instantly walked away and started utilizing the strategies in my home and have noticed a huge difference um, with my, my two toddlers. So it's been a lifesaver for me to have that. Um, again, due to the nature of the training, space will be limited. So if you're interested, we encourage you to sign up. Um, the link is at the bottom there. And we will be able to provide um, dinner for your family. So you're welcome to come, bring your family enjoy a dinner, and then there will also be on-site child care while you're um, going through the training. So if that is something that you're interested in, um, please, like I said, go to the link and we will um, communicate with anyone who's signed up and hopefully we can get a lot more people through, and if not, get a third training on the books to be able to get as many people through as possible. So that is a look into TBRI. And with that, I will turn it back over to Mrs. Hoover to wrap things up for the evening. Um, I want to thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we have some people here with us tonight. We also have um, hundreds of people who've at least seen on Facebook um, that were out there tonight and 75 who are watching. So um, that's really exciting. I know sometimes that's much more convenient, especially when you have kids at home, you can't always leave. And so we really appreciate you coming tonight, whether you're joining us here in person or whether you're online watching. Um, I want to let you know we always um, love to get questions. Um, we have amazing parents in our district who are very involved in their students' education. And so please reach out to us if you have questions or want to know more information as well as you can always, you know, work with uh, your, your teachers and your building administrators because the more active and involved our parents are, the better our schools are. So we really appreciate that. Thank you for joining us tonight. 
and we'll expect to, to see you next year when we um, have some new topics and updates. Thank you. Good night.